to season three episode I don't know if you can see me or not what's going on here hello 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 are you in are you what, what is going on here oh, it's like that big wall that Kezia tried to get through hold on a second let me um Ah, there we go. Excellent. Right. Let's start again. Here we go. So, boys and girls, welcome to Season 3, Episode 3. Um, what a way we're going already, aren't we? Uh, it's been great to be with you. And it was even better to see some of you as well. We've started meeting in the church again, haven't we, on a Sunday morning. And uh, it's amazing to see some of you guys uh, there in person, in real, physical bodies. Um, really, really good. Uh, I hope you can make it next Sunday uh, as well uh, to the church service. It'd be wonderful and really great uh, to see you. But we have been doing the challenges as well, haven't we? Boys versus girls. Uh, we've done two challenges so far. Boys have got one point. Girls have got one point, and uh, so we're going to see a little bit later what happens this week uh, with this week's challenge. And there's a bit of a clue uh, in those cups, uh, so you'll see what is coming up. And also, we've got our theme for this week. Uh, what have we got? Well, we've got love and sacrifice uh, for this week. Remember, sin and separation the week before? That wall, something is coming, something's going to happen. And uh, we're going to see about that today. So love and sacrifice is our theme uh, for this week. So, boys and girls, let's get straight into uh, the first part of Discoverers at Home. And uh, we've got the usual. We've got the songs. We've got Dennis time. We've got Dench time. And uh, so we've got the challenges uh, as well. So uh, let's sing our first song and uh, get straight into it. See you in a few minutes. Boys and girls, 
welcome back to Dennis time and Simon Says time. And uh, we know that in Dennis time and Simon Says time, we're thinking about how, well, we've been thinking about how God has made everything. And when he made everything, it was good. And right back at the very beginning, you've got Adam and Eve living in the Garden of Eden. And God said to them, you can eat at fruit from any tree in the whole garden any tree except except one god said to them if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil then you will surely die now they wouldn't do that would they did they yeah they did and because adam and eve disobeyed god because they sinned then as a result we people would always sin too Boys and girls, isn't that true? Don't you know in your own life that there are times when you know you do the wrong thing? Sometimes you get really cross. Sometimes you get really mean. Sometimes you get really greedy. Oh, boys and girls, even on our best day, don't we do wrong things? And the Bible calls that, calls that sin. And as a result of our sin, two things happen. The first thing is one day we will die. And the second thing is that we will be separated from God. You see, God is perfect. He is holy. And he can only have perfect and holy things around him to keep him holy and pure and perfect. But are we perfect? No. So we have to be separated from God. And that's what we saw with Kez last week, wasn't it? Do you remember Kez and the great big wall? She wanted to get to see her friend and... They were separated from each other, and sin separates us from God. But God has a plan. He has a loving plan to bring us back together with him. And his plan goes like this. He is going to send somebody, someone who would take the punishment for our sin. And that someone would be a person who would live in this world, but they would never sin. They would be perfect. Hmm. Who was that person who lived in this world and was perfect? It's Jesus. And we know that, and this is what we remember at Christmas time, that God sent his son. He came to earth just like us as a baby. He was a person who was going to rescue people. And as he grew up, he lived a perfect life. And as he grew up, he taught people all about God. He told them how and God loved them, and he showed them how he could heal them, and he told them that he could be their saviour. In fact, he can be your saviour too. And some people, yeah, they believed him. They all wanted him to be their saviour. But some people didn't. Some people didn't believe he was God's saviour. Some people didn't believe and want him to be their saviour. Do you know what they did? They did this. They arrested Jesus and sent him to die. But this is all part of God's plan. You see, when Jesus gave his life on the cross, he took our punishment for our sin. When Jesus died on the cross, he took your punishment for your sin and my punishment for my sin. You see, our punishment should be death and separation. But Jesus died the death that we deserve, even though he didn't deserve it. And on the cross, he was separated from God so that we can be with God. And we know this. After he died, Jesus' body was buried in a tomb. But then three days later, he rose again. Jesus has defeated sin as he took sin's punishment and he's defeated death and he proved it by coming back to life after he died. So boys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed that. But the important thing is this. Jesus has come into the earth to live the perfect life that we failed to live. And he's come into the earth to die the death that we deserve. He's been separated from God so that we can be with God. We can live with him forever. If we come to him 
and say, I believe and I want Jesus to be my saviour, then we can be saved from death and we can be with God forever and ever and ever. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds good. So boys and girls, why not do that today? Why not turn to Jesus and say, I'm sorry for my sin and I want to be forgiven and I want you to take the punishment that I deserve. And if you do, then you will be forgiven. You can be with Jesus and with God forever and ever. Well, Simon, back to you. And boys and girls, until next time, I'll say goodbye from now. And Simon, back to you. ta <laughs>
here we go. So let's get ready for this third challenge and uh, we'll see is it a boy is it a girl we'll find out let's go knock on the door and uh, see if we can get this first challenge done and then we'll go and see who is next door number one here we go so again i really hope they're going to be in so uh, we need to find the doorbell do a bit of that that as well let's get back and see who comes at the door this time i can see somebody there i can see somebody there they're gonna answer here comes the handle who do we have there is caleb hello caleb are you gonna do a challenge for me Are you going to do the challenge? Yes, excellent. Okay, here we go. Let's get ready for you, shall we? So here we go. We have Caleb. He's going to be the boys, representing the boys for this week's challenge. What he's got to do, he's got to make a pyramid out of cups. And we're going to time him and uh, see how long it takes to stack a pyramid and then put all the cups back like they are again. So Caleb, are you ready for this? Yes. Excellent. Here we go. Hopefully the wind won't blow them out. It is a little bit windy today, but here we go. Thumbs up if you're ready. E oh, two thumbs up. Excellent. Double ready. Here we go. Going to count down from three, two, and then one, and then go. So challenge for the boys. Three, two, one. One, go! Excellent, getting the cups out. Get his base section sorted first. There's his four. Looking good. Got our very steady hands. Going for his last one. There we go, and there we go, restack again. Very fast. and stop excellent well done very fast now let's go and see what the girls can do because i love you by jesus i'm going to tell you the most important story ever told it won't be easy for you to hear but I promise you this, it has the happiest ending in all the history of happy endings. It started when the Roman soldiers arrested me while I was praying. One of my dearest friends betrayed me to them, all for a little bit of money. That hurt. They took me to stand trial in front of Pontius Pilate, the local governor. The people accused me of being a traitor, but Pilate couldn't find anything wrong with me. But the people insisted on killing me anyway. Just a week earlier, they'd been cheering me on. Now, they wanted me dead. That hurt, too. It was then that the guards started beating me. They kicked me and whipped me over and over. They mocked me, calling me King of the Jews. And they made a crown out of sharp thorns and rammed it onto my head. That hurt so bad. But it only got worse. The guards made a big cross out of wood. They marched me up a hill called the Place of the Skull. I could barely catch my breath. The soldiers tried to give me a bitter drink to ease the pain, but I wouldn't take a sip. I had to endure every jolt, every stab, every sting, and there were so many. When they laid me on my back on the cross, my whole body winced in pain, but nothing hurt more than the nails. One at a time, the soldiers nailed my hands and feet to those wooden beams. It was like I was a piece of meat. I had nothing left. Still, they kept mocking me. If you're the son of God, why don't you save yourself, they shouted. But they didn't know. They didn't understand that God wanted me to go through with this. And they didn't realize how much I loved them. Every tear 
and every drop of blood was for them. It was almost the end. The sky turned black. I hung my head. I couldn't take another breath. The moment I died, things got scary. The ground shook. Rocks split apart. People wept. The curtain in the temple sanctuary split in half. Tombs opened up and dead people came back to life. The soldiers realized in an instant what they had done. They had killed me, God's son. They let my dead body hang there all afternoon. Later, a rich man named Joseph took my body and wrapped it in cloths. He buried me in a tomb carved out of the rocks. Yet my killers were nervous. They'd heard people talk about me rising from the dead. They thought my followers might come to steal my body and claim I wasn't dead anymore. So they rolled a giant stone in front of the tomb entrance and put two guards there to make sure nothing happened. But something did happen. Three days later, everything changed. As soon as the sun cracked the morning sky, an earthquake rattled the tomb. One of God's angels swept down and rolled the stone away. The guards were so scared they passed out. Just then, my friends Mary Magdalene and Mary came to visit the tomb. But when they saw the angel, their jaws dropped. Don't worry, said the angel. Jesus isn't here anymore. He's alive again. Hurry and go tell his followers. The women took off running. They were frightened and shocked and thrilled all at the same time. And when they saw me standing in the middle of the road, they ran even faster. You're alive, they cried. And I would stay alive this time forever. What great sacrifice that was for Jesus, willingly going to that cross for us. What love he has for us as well. Uh, to do that for you and for me. Wow, isn't it amazing? Even though I still do things wrong, Jesus died on that cross for me. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? A great love for us and a great sacrifice he made so that we can be with him one day. We can have that relationship restored. Well, next week we're going to have uh, a theme on restoration um, to have that relationship brought back uh, because of this sacrifice uh, that Jesus made. Isn't that absolutely great? Well, we've still got Dench time uh, coming up in a few minutes uh, as well. Uh, so more to come uh, from this theme. Challenge part two. Well done, Caleb. Uh, I've timed him to the cup stacking and restacking at 34 seconds. So uh, Caleb, 34 seconds uh, for his challenge. And uh, in a few minutes, we're gonna find out what the girls can do and who is it gonna be uh, representing them. Uh, so we've got another couple of songs, Dench Time Challenge, and uh, so some great times still coming up. So uh, let's get into our next song and uh, continue in to part two uh, of Discoverers at Home and uh, I'll see you in a few minutes.
Hello boys and girls, today we've been learning all about how Jesus died for us. He sacrificed himself so that we can be forgiven and it's all because of God's love for us. So how do I respond to this and how do you respond to this? What can we do? So let's have a look in the Bible about how one woman reacted to Jesus' sacrifice for her. So in John chapter 12, it talks about Mary and she had some very expensive perfume. This is my perfume. And she poured her perfume over Jesus' feet. And then she wiped Jesus' feet with her hair. All because she loved Jesus. Her response to Jesus' love and sacrifice for her, her forgiveness meant that she wanted to love and sacrifice something for him. So she sacrificed her expensive perfume. The disciples were there and they said, but this perfume could have been sold and the money given to the poor. But she did this to show her love for Jesus. So have a think today. How can we show our love for Jesus in what we do? The boys have done their challenge. Great cup stacking. Uh, by Caleb and uh, so we're off to the girls and uh, we'll find out who uh, is going to be representing the girls any second and uh, see if they can beat Caleb's time. Remember it's one all at the moment uh, between the boys and the girls and uh, we're just about to find out who is going to win this week's challenge so here we are we're outside the house and uh, i'm gonna go and knock on the door and um, we'll see uh, who is gonna be on the girls side today so here we go a little bit windy again still but uh, number 13 they've got a doorbell as well let's go and find out let's ring this we come back and uh, let's see who is going to answer this door i can see some movement through the window you might recognize the house but uh, let's see i can see somebody there here we go oh there's there's peter there's Grace, and here is Leia. Hello, Leia. Hello, Grace. Come in, Come and say hello, Leia. So, Leia, are you going to do the challenge for us? Yeah. Excellent. Oh yes, get those get those wellies on, so you can come outside. That'd be really, really great. So I'll tell you what you have to do and then we'll get into it, okay? All right, here we go. Let me explain what we need to do today. So here we go, we've got Leia. She's gonna represent the girls in this challenge. And uh, again, she's gonna do a pyramid out of the cups. And uh, after three, three, two, one, and then when I say go, you can start, okay? So here we go. Three, two, one, go! As fast as you can. Excellent. They do get stuck together a little bit. That is really, really good. There's your four together. Push the other ones together now so they make a nice four. And there we go. Very good. It's a little bit windy still. And one in the middle. There we go. Two more on top of that. Excellent. Bit stuck. Bit tricky. 
There we go. One on there. And last one on top. There we go. Restack them again. As fast as you can. Oh, good restacking. And stop. Excellent. Well done. There we go. So we're going to find out who was the quickest. And so you'll be able to watch and uh, see who wins this week's challenge. Thank you very much, Leia. Yeah, I'm waiting, Sarah. Come on, I'm waiting. Uh, oh, Sarah, no sweets. Oh, looking forward to that as well. Oh dear me. Next time, Sarah. Okay, thank you. Um, there we go, boys and girls. Whew. Were you counting the seconds? Well done, Leia. Um, on uh, that challenge. Were you counting? Do you know who's won? Whew, well, I think just in it, Caleb won that round. So it was one all for the boys and girls. It now turns to, after that challenge, 2-1 to the boys with two challenges remaining. Wow, it's uh, pretty intense, isn't it? Whose house is it going to be next week? What's going to happen? Who's it going to be? Is it going to be boys or girls? Well done, you two, uh, Caleb and Leia, for taking part uh, in this week's doorstep challenge. And thank you, Steve and Sarah, uh, for your times. And uh, what a sacrifice that lady made. Um, not only we found out in the first part, Jesus making a sacrifice because he loves us, um, but that lady making a sacrifice of that perfume um, because she loved Jesus. And uh, it works that way as well, doesn't it? We love Jesus, so we sacrifice uh, what we have uh, for him as well, just to show him just a little bit of how much we love him uh, as well. Well, there we go. So what's next week's theme? I uh, already mentioned earlier, didn't I? Restoration and help. We need that relationship back together again, don't we? Jesus has done his part. He's died for us. He's rose again. He's with his Father in heaven. Uh, and now it's our part, isn't it? Uh, Steve mentioned uh, as well. We need to do our part in our hearts to have that relationship restored. And don't worry, we get help as well. It's pretty tough sometimes. Uh, to keep on loving God. And uh, so there's help for us as well. Jesus, God, they don't leave us uh, on our own. So we're going to find out about that all next week. And uh, so there we go. Boys and girls, we've come to the end of Discoverers at Home uh, again for this week. We've got one more song uh, to finish with. And uh, But look out. Uh, it could be you next week uh, doing the challenges. And uh, we look forward to... Uh, Kez time uh, as well next week on this next theme. So uh, boys and girls for now it's uh, goodbye from me, it's goodbye from everybody else and it's tally hose and toodle pips. <laughs>